What up peeps, Raging Fib aka BLF here. The Oscars are right around the corner, which means it's about that time that I count down my top 10 movies of the past year. As always, the films on this list aren't necessarily the most well-written, well-directed, or well-crafted ones. While I do take many technical aspects of filmmaking into consideration, this list is ranked primarily on my personal taste and enjoyment of cinema. You should also note that I obviously haven't seen every single movie released in 2018. So if there's a film missing from this list that you think should probably be on here, there's a chance that I just haven't seen it yet. Now, without further ado, it's time to count down my top 10 movies of 2018. Start churning butter and put on your church shoes, little sister, because we're about to blast off! Launching the list at number 10 is First Man. Damien Chazelle has already established himself as a notable writer and director with two critically acclaimed films under his belt, Whiplash and La La Land both of which were nominated for Best Picture. First Man is the only movie in Chazelle's filmography that he didn't write, but he still did a fine job of transforming the adapted screenplay into a major motion picture. The well-written story gives the viewers a more intimate look into Neil Armstrong's personal life, leading up to him becoming the first human being to step foot on the moon. Between the costumes, props, and set design, the movie is very immersive and feels completely authentic to the 60s. The sound design and sound mixing is also remarkable, especially during scenes that take place within a space shuttle, making it feel as though you're sitting right there next to the astronauts. The cinematography is pretty solid for the most part, however there are several moments of questionable camera movement and framing decisions that I found extremely distracting and jarring. The film also drags in certain scenes and definitely isn't as fun as the other movies on this list. Consequently, the film doesn't have as much of a rewatchability factor as the other selections on this list, which is why First Man lands at number 10. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Logging in at number 9 is Ralph Breaks the Internet. I thoroughly enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph, but I like the sequel even more. Ralph Breaks the Internet is a fun movie with solid humor, especially when spoofing internet trends and behavior. It's filled with great pop culture references and easter eggs, and I especially love the scenes involving character cameos and appearances by Disney-owned properties. Just like its predecessor, Ralph Breaks the Internet isn't just all flash. It contains a good amount of heart with a decent message and life lesson. However, I thought it'd be more appropriate and the story would be much improved if the lesson corresponded to the whole internet theme, such as internet addiction or depression but the story's message has absolutely nothing to do with the internet at all. The movie also feels a bit longer than it actually is. The third act in particular is a bit tiresome. I didn't find the climax very thrilling or suspenseful at all, and just waited for the conflict to be resolved. As a result, Ralph Breaks the Internet signs out at number 9. Mm, you're not wrong. Dropping in at number 8 is Mission Impossible Fallout. This popcorn flick is full of great action sequences and grand set pieces. In the sixth installment of the Mission Impossible franchise, it's crazy to think how Tom Cruise, at 56 years old, is still killing it in his role as Ethan Hunt, and on top of that, continuing to do many of his own stunts as well. Fallout has a well-written story, is well shot, and is just an overall well-made action movie. Like a skilled magician, the film does a great job in using the art of deception, fooling its audience every bit as much as its villains. Certain things the Mission Impossible team pull off are a bit too convenient though. In some cases, they seem to be too knowledgeable, as if they can foresee the future and unrealistically know exactly how things are going to unfold. With that being said, Mission Impossible Fallout taps out at number 8. Taking the stage at number 7 is Bohemian Rhapsody. As you'd expect of a biopic of Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody is an enjoyable film packed with great music. The story is driven by Rami Malek's commendable portrayal of frontman Freddie Mercury. And while I do appreciate Malek's performance, at the same time, I also think it's a bit overrated. I understand this is an unpopular opinion, but I just don't think he deserves all the accolades and praise he's been receiving for this role. Does he deserve the nominations? Absolutely. But I just don't think his characterization is as remarkable as many say it is, and it definitely doesn't hold a candle to Bradley Cooper's performance in A Star is Born or Viggo Mortensen's in Green Book. The fact that Malik didn't even perform most of the vocals during the musical sequences in the movie leaves me even less impressed. I went into the film with some pretty high expectations, but under the direction of Brian Singer, Bohemian Rhapsody fell a bit short. 
I was anticipating something great and came away with something good, but nothing spectacular. I know it's a daunting task to take on the role of such an iconic figure as Freddie Mercury and to tell the story of a legendary band such as Queen, but to me, the film doesn't do them quite enough justice. On top of that, the movie contains quite a handful of corny parts, pacing issues, and a serious lack of challenges in the band's rise to success. And even though I love how the film ends, the chronology of events is one of several inaccuracies contained within the movie. I did enjoy the film a lot, just not as much as I would have liked. So for Bohemian Rhapsody, the curtain falls at number 7. Joining the game at number 6 is Ready Player One. This adventure action sci-fi flick is an extremely fun ride. The story provides very creative and cool concepts. The movie itself contains thrilling action sequences and is filled to the brim with exciting easter eggs and pop culture references. In fact, you could watch the film 10 times and not pick up every single one. Whether you're a movie or video game nerd, Ready Player One will give you major nostalgia and an abundance of eye candy sure to make you geek out. My negatives for this film are quite limited. It does have a lot of cheesy parts, and is missing the same magnitude of wonder and awe that you often find in many of Spielberg's works. Also, I found my enjoyment in the film significantly diminishing with each additional view, which isn't as common for me as you might think. Considering the weak rewatchability factor in addition to my other thoughts about the movie, Ready Player One zeroes out at number 6. Suiting up at number 5 is Incredibles 2. This much anticipated Pixar sequel is another extremely fun flick with dazzling action sequences. I love the creativity and how superpowers are used in different ways. The story is well written, kept me engaged, contains interesting concepts, and hits on different levels. Just like its predecessor, Incredibles 2 isn't just an ordinary superhero flick, but works as a relatable family movie as well. There isn't as much comedy in the film as I thought there would be, but besides that, I don't have too many other significant flaws to say about it. Nevertheless, Incredibles 2 punches out at number 5. <laughs> Pouncing onto the scene at number 4 is Black Panther. This groundbreaking installment of the MCU introduces a handful of new fantastic characters, played by a very good ensemble cast with excellent chemistry. The intriguing story is a modernized Shakespearean tale set in the fictional African country of Wakanda. Black Panther turned out to be a cultural phenomenon, praised for being a socially significant film. But besides that, the movie packs a punch with stunning visuals, stimulating action sequences, and both an electrifying soundtrack and original score to go along with it. Killmonger, played by Michael B. Jordan, is a great, complex, smartly written, and formidable villain whose motives are clear and coherent. The divisive character is definitely one of the best antagonists we've seen on screen in any comic book movie. Black Panther is a refreshing addition to the superhero genre, with a very different feel than any other MCU film. In fact, it's often easy to forget you're watching a superhero flick at all, especially when certain scenes give off more of a spy thriller vibe, or maybe even a drama. However, the movie still has its flaws. Many of the action sequences could have been shot and choreographed much better particularly during the climax. And without giving anything away, certain events transpire too quickly and conveniently. Do I think the film deserves its nomination for Best Picture? No, not at all. Movies such as The Dark Knight and Logan are far superior works of art that transcend the superhero genre. These two exemplary masterpieces were not nominated for Best Picture, but deserved way more consideration for the category. Nevertheless, Black Panther is still a very fun, entertaining, and culturally significant film that makes the list at number 4. Shining brightly at number 3 is A Star is Born. Bradley Cooper is absolutely phenomenal in his portrayal as country music star Jackson Maine. The dedication and work he put into preparing for this role is evident in his outstanding performance of the seasoned musician haunted by his own demons. Lady Gaga is remarkably impressive as well, especially considering this is her first major role in a full-length feature film. The story is heavy and emotional, and certainly provokes stronger feels than any of the lower entries on this top 10 list. 
The music is fantastic, and the scenes which take place during live concert performances are extremely well done, using prominently renowned stages and venues. My problems with the film are more like nitpicks than anything else. The passing of time can be a bit confusing between certain scenes. The sequence at the Grammys is powerful overall, but I don't think they had to show Jackson performing a certain act in order for it to be effective. That makes the scene feel somewhat silly and over the top, as it was something I could see happening in a Will Ferrell comedy. The movie also feels a little long. Overall, A Star Is Born is still a terrific film, worthy of its Oscar nominations, so it exits the stage at number three. We're far from the shallow now. Pulling up to the number two spot is Green Book. Speaking of films worthy of their Oscar nominations, Green Book is a well-made movie with a well-written story driven by great acting performances of Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali. Mortensen in particular does a tremendous job in portraying the layered role of Frank Vallelonga, aka Tony Lip. With many scenes filled with good humor and others causing anguish, this emotionally effective movie will give you feels on both ends of the spectrum. It's very entertaining to watch the dynamic between Mahershala Ali's depiction of Don Shirley and Mortensen's Vala Longa, which naturally leads to strong character development. I really don't have anything negative to say about this film, and as a result, Green Book checks out at number two. And that's good. It's perfect, Tony. Totally. And finally, topping the list at number one is Avengers Infinity War. Ten years and 18 films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe have all been leading to this. With a star-studded cast, amazing action sequences, and an extraordinary villain who is hands down the MCU's greatest and most menacing threat, the movie absolutely blew me away. Witnessing the plethora of diverse, colorful characters interacting with one another is awesomely entertaining and was balanced brilliantly by the Russo brothers. The film is a good blend of action, comedy, and surprisingly emotional, heartfelt moments. The stakes are raised and the insane, jaw-dropping ending was totally unexpected. Seeing this movie in IMAX 3D on opening night easily makes it onto my top 5 cinematic experiences of all time. Infinity War may not have the exceptional acting performances as A Star Is Born or Green Book. The story may not be as well written and the movie overall may not be as completely well crafted as some of the others on this list, but the enjoyment, excitement, and fun I experience while watching this film far exceeds the others which is why Avengers Infinity War is my number one movie of 2018. And there you have it, my top 10 movies of the year. Feel free to share your own thoughts and opinions. Discussions are always welcome. What do you think? Well, what do you know? Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, peace out.